I would say like millennial is like to do with something that you feel kind of defines your generation. I don't really identify with it at all. I don't know what it is. If someone called me part of that, I wouldn't know if it's a compliment or an insult. It's, it's bollocks. I'm Matthew Bennett. I'm the chief creative officer of SAC. Millennials are this, millennials are that, millennials need this. You know, we use the wrong language to uh, talk about young people. We uh, commissioned this research, you know, to, to kind of establish the factual, to give us this framework. You had this word that you were using, which was selfhood, and we loved that word, selfhood. It's interesting when you start to consider the world in which young people today have grown up in and how different it is to the generation before our experience at ID has been. Young people are much smarter, much more savvy around the culture within which they inhabit and much more creative in the way that they develop their place within that. The fixed versus the fluid. Nature, in other words, what's specific and unique about the youth brain times culture in terms of what's going on around them. Uh, is, is the thing that really, really interested us and, and is why we, we wanted to kind of commission this research of nature times culture equals selfhood. We initially tried to understand how the youth brain is different from, from the older brain. We thought we'll need to speak to uh, a neuropsychologist to really help us understand that. The frontal part of the brain, which is the manager of the brain, that matures probably in our mid to late 20s. The part which is involved in decision making and future planning, um, develops last. That development even happens up to sort of 25, 26, 27. He talked about risk taking, he talked about the search for novelty, he talked about the need to be together and belonging, things which um, exemplify what it is to be young, no matter where you are in the world and what era you've been born into. You also need to understand this in terms of culture. So we spoke to a bunch of experts who helped us understand what was going on in youth culture. Too many kind of articles, study, studies, and reports about young people kind of leave out the young person's voice. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, yes, we spoke to all these great commentators and experts, but we want to use those findings and sort of put them in front of people and get them talking. Whether they feel like they're being represented currently. Everything in kind of the media, what they advertise, is so, it's such the wrong ideal of what represents us. I'm so much more than that. Our neuropsychologist helps us understand that risk is an essential characteristic of what it is to be young. Risk taking is just part of that thing that we're into trying out new things, which is the way that we develop and that's why we're here today. You know, if you look at the, the kind of cultural context of, of what that means now, you're looking at purpose and, and objective uh, behind that risk. So this isn't, you know, rebel without a cause. It's about using your voice and your confidence as a young person to change the world for the better. You know, risk uh, and purpose kind of when that comes together, that, that gives us this sense of, of bravery now. And Taking a risk in how they express themselves and self-expression uh, is a process that feels to us like it's way more conscious than the generation before. Now young people today are taking risks in everything that they do because every time they kind of put themselves out there online, they're opening themselves up to be judged um, at some on some level. Absolutely. Brands need to kind of handle themselves very carefully around this to make sure that they're aligned with their audience rather than trying to talk too much about the brand and look at our purpose and look how, how worthy we are because under 30 see through all of that shit. The Pepsi advert that got banned. Oh, oh, don't get this started. I think it was just someone's very silly mistake. Someone was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be great, let's do it, and we we're like, yeah, it sounds good. Advertisers assuming that, you know, we're all part of this great liberation, revolutionary sort of moment, when really it's not the case. that sense of belonging, that's what's glued us together. If the brain circuitry is there to feel uh, a buzz out of being around other people, there's always going to be a need to want to be part of something. It's a very important part of who we are and it's starting around puberty. The way kind of culture manifests that like now and affects that now is, is fundamentally different. They would have at least 10 or more groupings on their social media. And each groupings may belong to different things. One of the three least important 
biggest markers of identity was being part of a tribe? And just because I'm not a skater, I might want to wear a supreme top, do you know what I mean? So it doesn't really make sense to pigeonhole it by this tribe shops here. Like, it's not obvious anymore. They pick and mix from the, the old sort of tribal behaviour. Be it around interests or be it around um, moments in time. The primary difference that we always consider is technology. When I was younger, there were three TV channels. I think everything is on demand. You don't have that kind of live viewing experience where you can get into work or uni the next day and have that conversation where you're kind of like, what went on? People are starting to like really try and create those moments with things like parties around viewing. If you look at what that means for, for, for brands now, it is this synchronicity, it's, it's recognising that, that diversity is here uh, and, and here to stay and is something that is, is massively important to, to under 30s. To feel that sense of belonging is something that, um, that we're finding young people have to do and be more creative in the way that they feel part of a group. Young people are willing to try things out because they haven't got trammelled into thinking in particular ways. Always been a need for, for under 30 people to find you and the next. I think one of the challenges for a young person today is how to manage the vast amount of information. Young people are spending pretty much as much time on their phones as they are sleeping. They need to become connoisseurs of novelty as a way of just generating some meaning from all this stuff that is surrounding them. When you're overloaded with that much information, sometimes you're craving that lightness. So if something's just a bit fun and silly, um, then that can be really, really interesting, but it's not necessarily enough to keep young people engaged. I think that they would only be happy to follow or to buy the new things, new services, when they understand what it means. Depth and purpose is like essential. You know, this is the rise of brands with a real sort of um, meaning and purpose and, and that's, dr that's driving the curiosity. What do you stand for as a brand? You know, what are you doing? What, how are you putting your money where your mouth is? What are you doing other than just trying to sell me shit? Um, and I think that's, that's hugely important. If you look at a brand that gets that really, really right is you look at Vice. They're not asking you for likes, they're asking you to engage, they're asking you to lean in and find out more, immerse yourself and mobilise, you know, and, and get involved in their stories and the news that they're bringing to you. The summary and the, the, the output of this has given us this framework of uh, of nature times culture equals selfhood, this notion of treating this group as, uh, as, as a group of individuals. So Selfhood is our global insights network. We wanted to have presence in the most culturally dynamic, exciting and relevant cities in the world. Identified 22 as a start point, we then started to build this network of early adopters, forward thinking under 30s consumers. That if we could have a way of talking to them on an ongoing basis, we would get real-time insights which would be super powerful to the brand that we work with rather than traditional research model where we had to wait so long to get that feedback. Whatever group we're working on we always start with that consumer insight and then we build the campaign from there.